What's going on YouTube? It's Orock here. I'm back at you with yet another video. And in today's video, we're going to go over leak code number 200, number of islands. We're gonna do this in Java, by the way. And this is like a depth first search question. So it's a very uh, um, introductory, I would say, question to this type of uh, methodology of solving, like, you know, the search and, and, and breath first search and graph type problems. Um, so stick around. We're going to show you the simplest way to do this um, using a depth first search. And by the way, if this is your first time, one of my videos, I make a lot of tech tutorials um, that help you become a better software engineer, that help you in your career, that help you with interviews. And I just help you become a better all around programmer. So if that's in any interest of you or of any interest to you, um, I encourage you to hit that bell notification button, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button so you'd be notified whenever I make content like this. But let's get into it right now. Um, so I'm going to read the problem statement. Problem statement says, given an M by N 2D binary grid, which represents a map of ones, which is the land and zeros, which is the water, return the number of islands. And it goes on to say the number of islands is that uh, an island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally and vertically. You may also assume that all four edges of the grid are all surrounded by water. So let's break this down because that is a lot. And if this is one of your first time seeing a problem like this, it can be a little confusing. So let's break down a couple of details that they gave us. So it said an island of water is so an island is surrounded by water and is formed by adjacent lands so basically the ones have to be side by side and how they're going to be side by side horizontally and vertically so up down left and right that's a huge clue right so there's no diagonals here um, and all four edges are surrounded by water. So what does that mean? That means your boundaries of the grid, the top of the grid. So anything beyond that one up lower than this, this is the zeroth row here, right? So, and, and anything below zero is a boundary. So that is going to be, so if you're on a row and then you go below zero, that's a boundary and that's going to be more water. Similarly, if you're in this column, the last column to the right, and then you go one more over, you're going to be beyond the boundary. You're going to hit more water. Same thing on the bottom. Go below, below, past that that last, that final number of rows. So you go beyond the number of rows that are actually given to you. So that's greater than M because M is the number of rows and is the column. So you're going beyond M. And then that's the boundary. That's more water to the left as well. If you're going below the number of columns like if you are below zero sorry you're going below zero you're going beyond that boundary you're going to hit more water so that's what they mean by you may assume all four edges of the grid are surrounded by water anyway let's get into sketch so we're going to go into sketch real quick and i've already kind of drawn out and written out some examples i'm going to just go through them really quickly right so what are our constraints our constraints are you can have you can't have any diagonals right we're giving an n by n matrix. M is equals to the grid dot length. So basically the number of rows, which is M, is going to be equals to the grid length. What does that mean? That means that that first outer a row, that first outer uh, uh, array, that length is going to be equal to the rows. And the first um, element length so the zero with n right is going to be equal to grid zero dot length that means the first element the length of that first element whatever the length of that first element is is going to be the number of columns right and one is less than equals to m that means that m is going to at least have one row right it's never going to be um so when we say one is less than or equals to m you can also say that m is greater than or equals to one right so you switch to m and a one and then you switch the signs around that's m is greater than or equals to one which i think makes more sense but this is iron out in the problem so one is less than or equal to m that means that m is never going to be below one 
and and it similarly is never going to be beyond 300 so those are our constraints here and for a solution i ironed out a simple uh sort of traversing solution which incorporates depth first search as well so you have two loops you nest one loop in the other and one is going to traverse the rows and the other one is going to traverse the columns so as so check out this example i'm gonna just draw it out right so this is going to be as you're traversing the outer loop is going to traverse the rows right one two three that's going to traverse the rows and then the inner loop is going to traverse the columns like this so that's how it's going to work basically right um and you use the dfs to find the ones and you also need a num of islands variable to sort of um Basically, right when you break into the second, uh, the second loop, and you do find a one, because you're gonna have an if condition that checks to find a one, and if you do have that one, you break into that if, and then you increase this variable right here, this num of islands. You increase that if it's found, and then short after that like literally the next line of code you'd be to break into this depth first search and to find more ones right and then to mark them you want to also mark them as seen i didn't write that here but that's also what you want to do you want to mark the ones as seen when you do encounter them right so i'm gonna just go to an example here let me just really quick let me just change the color of this uh, i'm gonna change it to white so all right coming back to this diagram you see again there's no interruption in the ones that i'm about to draw a circle around you see those ones there is no interruption in them at all right so that's just one island that's why we get one island here right similarly there's one island here one island here oh wait sorry one island here and then one island here so that's three that's how i got three there right and for this one is two there's one island here off in the corner and then an l-shaped island right here that's how i got three i mean two for the last one so let's just go through a couple examples of how this depth first search actually works right remember depth first you're going deep into breath first search you check the adjacent neighbor depth first you just keep going keep going keep going until you hit your boundary or you hit your uh your um terminating case then you backtrack you backtrack you backtrack right so that's basically what happens so you come to this first cell you skip over it right you come to one now you increase when you come here you mark it as seen so i'm going to use like a star to denote that it's seen right you, you you mark it as seen you increase the number of islands now you want to break into that first search and find more ones until you can't find any more ones and then you break out into the next iteration in the loop which is like the next row and you keep trying to find more ones and if you don't then you just return your number of islands that you've seen so so from here I'm going to try and go up. I'm going to hit my, my boundary case. I'm going to try and go left. Um, I'm hitting a zero. Um, I'm going to try and go right. And I see another one. And I'll mark that as seen, right? Um, and then from here, I'm going to try and go up. I can't go up. I can't go left because this is already seen. I can go right. So I go right, right? And then I mark this one as seen. And I try the same thing. I go up, can't go up, can't go left because that's seen. I can't go right. That's a boundary. Can't go down. That's water. Um, so in all four directions, you cannot really do anything. So I backtrack. I backtrack back to this one that called me, right? And then I try and see if there's any other directions I can go here. Remember, we went left and I hit um, the head of one that's seen. I went up. It's a boundary to the right is seen now you go down you actually find a one and you mark that as seen and you repeat the process you go right here that's an, that's water you go down that's an actually a one so you can mark that as seen and then you can start to repeat the process up 
you try and go up that's scene right that's water down that's some more water and also our boundary case left it's some more water so you now have to backtrack up right backtrack up to this one and this one will do the same thing again check all the directions and the only one that we can see of a possible move is here this last one and then this one is going to try and go up it's going to be blocked because that one has already been seen this one to his right has been seen there's water down here and there's water to the right so what are we going to do we're going to keep on backtracking and backtracking and backtracking and backtracking until we get to the first one that called this so we get back here right and once we get back here we're just returning back to the original function and breaking out into the next iteration in the loop and in this matrix case there's no other ones that will form and make an island so you're just going to traverse 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 until you break out and then you return one for that this made this particular matrix would just return one similarly you would do the same thing i'm going to just go through one more example you do the same thing for here you start at the zero here you start at the zero and then you try and go right you know you you know uh you look for you're looking for one actually so you're going to look 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 oop found the one boom we increase the number of islands and then you mark this as seen you try and go in all four cardinal directions and in this case you're not going to hit another one so you increase the rows you break into the next um the next iteration of the uh what you call it the rows so you went from zero to one now you're in this the, the one iteration of you know the rows and then you, you start from here this zeroth row i mean this zeroth uh column and you try and go up again you hit zero you go try and go left that's your boundary case you try and go down and then you find another one again you mark this as scene mark this as scene you try and go left from here you try and go up that's uh that's a scene one already trying to go to right that's zero that's water and down is zero so you're gonna have to just backtrack you're gonna backtrack here and then you're gonna try all these directions again and then you're gonna go right and then you're gonna see that this is on the scene and then you're gonna go in all these directions again um and you won't be able to so now you now backtrack to this this one that called it right and then you just break out and then you keep searching you keep searching until you reach this one right here and then that process repeats you mark this as scene you go to your right again this tries to go up this tries to go left and this tries to go right and it won't be able to because everything is either seen or some water so what do we do um um, we break out and we just return this number three and in all that time we uh when every time we break into a new one that begins an island we increase this count okay um so enough of the explanation i really hope i was thorough enough to explain this in a way that you'd understand it and if i wasn't please just let me know in the comments let me know uh, if I could do a better job explaining, I'll try and make videos that are more engaging, that have more examples, and that allow you to conceptually visualize these answers and visualize how to solve these problems, right? So I'm going to put this pen away, take this glove off, and then we're going to go back to Leak Code. We're going to go back and solve this problem now that we have an understanding of it, right? Okay, so... Um, the first thing here I want to do is I want to check if this grid is equal to null or the grid dot length is equal to null. Basically, if you don't have uh, anything in your grid or you don't have any columns, right? Um, so uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to say if grid grid is equals to null or either or these conditions we're just going to return a zero so grid dot length is equals to zero and what do we want to do we want to return a zero right 
Boom. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to declare that I'm going to just do it up here. That it num of islands. And we're going to initialize that to zero. All right. And then we're going to have our nest for loop. So for int r. And people like to use i and j for these type of problems, but like since we're dealing with rows and columns, I think it's gonna just make more sense to use r and c. So you'll see me use r and c, r, and we do r is less than the grid dot length, which is the number of rows. And then we have another four, which is the c, and c is equals to zero. C is less than grid I dot length and then uh, C plus plus. Yep, looks good. And then what do we want to do? We want to check if the grid at R and C is equals to a one. So if it's equals to a one, what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to increase the number of islands. Just copy that. We're going to increase the number of islands plus plus. Then we're going to run a DFS. I'm going to define that in a second. And we're just going to pass the grid, the row, the column, right? Um, and after all that, we break out. And then we are just trying to find out where to return return the number of islands now we're not done here we still got to do the dfs which is going to take a um char uh what do we call this grid right grid and int r and int c right um so what do we do here what we want to do is we want to take a boolean, right? And we want to check if any one of the conditions, remember those conditions with the boundaries, if R is less than zero, if C is less than zero, or R is greater than the grid dot length, um, or C is greater than the grid I dot length. We're going to throw all of those into a boolean, right? Um, and we're going to just call this boolean is out of bounds right and that's going to equals to whatever returns from r is less than zero or c is less than zero remember those cases where r less than zero that's up that up case c is less than zero that's that left boundary right um or R is greater than or equals to grid dot length or C is greater than or equals to the grid at eyes right dot length and that's gonna be equal just to the number of roads it's past that boundary on the right and I is greater than or equals to the grid dot length is past that boundary on the bottom. So I think that is it for all my conditions, right? And then you're gonna say if I'm gonna say if uh is, let me just copy that. I'm gonna say is out of bounds or the grid at RC is equals to zero, which is just water. What we want to do is we want to return, right? And actually we could just throw that in here. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to check all four cardinal directions and I didn't iron this out here, but I'm going to write this little mathematical sort of uh, statements that um, help you visualize what we're supposed to do next. So when you're traversing the depth first search, you want to do R plus one for the top 
and then C, right? And then for the right, you want to do um, R stays the same, and then you do C plus one. Similarly, for the left, R stays the same, and it's C minus one. And down is R. Uh, what is down? R is down is R minus one. Sorry, uh, R plus one. Sorry. So the top is R minus one. So R plus one, and then C stays the same. And I'm gonna come up and erase this. Mm, it's supposed to be R minus one. Uh, come on, come on, pen. All right, here we go. My, I don't know why that's so hard. Anyway, yeah, so this is how we're going to get to the top. This is how we're going to get to the right. How are we going to get down? And this is how we're going to get to the left. So let's see how that looks like in code. Right? So I already did this. Um, so we're going to just do a DFS on the grid. DFS on a grid. And like I said, that first, you know, we're going up. Well, we're going down, really. It doesn't matter which order you write them in, um, because a DFS and BFS, they return many results. So I'm just going to do R plus one and then C. And I'm just going to copy this and write it out like four more times. Ooh, formatting is horrible. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be R minus one, and then delete all this, and then C plus one, and then C minus one, and then delete that, and then it's just an R, and I think we should be good to go. Um, yeah, let's just run this test case and see what's going on. Okay, so I found the error. It's down here on line 22. I'm supposed to have a R here and up here on line 10. And that second nested four, I'm supposed to have an R here. And let me just run this because it should work after that. Okay, all the test cases are, ex use example test cases. Let me do that, run the code, okay. Now, let me just try and submit this. <clears throat> Great, hooray, we passed all our test cases. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Um, like I said before, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this.